Hi guys, it's Dane here and welcome to another weekly reading vlog. Let's do this. Yum yum. <coughs> nom nom nom. Nom and nom. Just add this, the thing to your cocktail. I am feeling very Christmassy because I'm watching Hulk <coughs> Cold Ones. Don't know what that was. Just forgive me there. Uh, I didn't really film over Christmas and stuff just because I was at my mum's house and, you know, yeah, I wanted to live in the now a bit, you know. I think I did get a few clips here and there, so you may have seen those. I also don't remember whether I did a, an intro to this vlog, so if I didn't, then the intro that you watched at the start of this vlog was filmed now, and if I did, I'll just cut this out. So I'm back at home. Uh, da -da -da -da. What are you doing, Biggie? Are you gonna come in? Yeah, it's cold out there, isn't it? He's missing me a bit. In fact, Biggie, we got a little present to open. We got a present. We got a present from your grandma. Come on then, come over here. You've got your tail directly in the way, haven't you? I put that there so your tail wouldn't be in. Let's put it, let's put it over here. Come on then, let's see what grandma got you. Look at this big, oh she got you some of your favourites. So she got you a cheesy mix of Felix's and some Dreamy's Deli Cats. He likes these, the Deli Cats. Don't you Biggie? You want that one or this one? Which one do you want to try? Should we try this one? What we got then? Uh, uh, what's this? <whistles> nom 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 nom. Good boy. Oh, you're doing your purrs as well. Here you go, you can have some more. What'd you say, Biggie? You're gonna say, you're gonna say, you're gonna say thank you, Grandma. Thank you, Grandma, I appreciate it. Okay, so I guess I should give you an update. Well, uh, on the run-up to Christmas, I was just being productive as possible. I've been cleaning my flat. Um, I actually need to give it a hoover. I've taken my Christmas decorations down now already. So I need to give it a hoover. My mum's actually ordered me a new hoover, which is coming tomorrow, which is very kind of her, and some new bedding as well. Um, so yes, so I travel back on the evening of the 23rd. I basically just got drunk on the train, to be honest. I was sitting there drinking beer on the train. And then I went to meet my friend Nick and we played some pool. Uh, then on the 24th, the 24th I literally worked all day. Because uh, my mum had work until about 4 or 5 p.m. So I worked while she was away and then in the evening we just sort of watched some Christmas movies. And uh, yeah, I was cracking on with some work. And then on Christmas day I went to my grandma's. We went out for dinner at a pub, uh, which is like a family tradition I guess. My, my uncle Carl normally goes, but he didn't come this year because he was with his partner. Um, a guy called, oh god, what's his name? I don't know, I've never met him. So I'd, I'd, I've met his uh, previous partner. Fuck. Oh, Chris, that's it, he's called Chris. So uh, yeah, Carl and Chris, they had like a, a, their own little Christmas dinner, which is fair enough. Um, yes, yeah, so I was at my grandma's, fell asleep after the food. It was all right. My granddad sneezed on my food and I just had to eat it because everyone just acted as though it hadn't happened. So yeah, that was weird, but uh, <laughs> But um, yeah, I was kind of not really feeling it anyway because it was one of those like a carvery, so there was like all dead animals everywhere, and I was just like, uh... um, yeah. Then I was full, so I fell asleep. And my parents and my my mum and my grandparents were talking about uh, what the royal family had worn to church, and I'm like, oh, I don't. It's not really my area of interest, you know. Uh, my mum had also got them a Google Home, so I had to set that up. And then in the evening, I got kind of down. I get down most Christmases, to be honest. So I ended up just going to bed at about half seven, just with depression, just trying to sleep it off. So then I woke up Boxing Day morning, went to see my dad, saw my dad's crazy dog, who's called Bentley. Who there was, I think there was a clip of that. And uh, yeah, I only stayed for a couple of hours, then went back to my mum's. And again, I just worked. I've been working as much as I can, really, to try and build up a little bit of a nest egg. I actually paid my tax just before Christmas, so that's good. So now I can, any money that I make above and beyond what I need to live, I can save up for my next tax bill, and also for when I move out of this place. We up, biggie, 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 he's, he's, I think he's, he gets annoyed when I do that. What are you doing? What are you doing? You've opened your present, mate. You can't open it again. <laughs> Yeah, you can see up there, um, that's where I've been sorting through all my books. So that's my stack of to keep books. 
Uh, yep, slowly but surely sorting through that. And then up there we've got some on display as well and some space for some more. So that's lovely. Uh, what did I get? I guess I could talk about what I got for Christmas. Picky, what are you doing? <laughs> so um, I didn't get any books, but that's because I asked not to be given any books because then I feel obliged to read them and I don't always want to, you know? Uh, I got some Amazon vouchers and also I'm trying to boycott Amazon at the moment, but I forgot to tell people. Well, also, like next Christmas, I want to ask people not to wrap my presents or if they want to, to use parcel wrapping paper. Because, Biggie, you've got a little tuft here, haven't you? You've got a little tuft of hair. Um, just because wrapping paper is really bad for the environment and can't be recycled. What are we going to do about this little tuft? Am I going to have to cut that off? Yeah, and I, actually I was getting kind of sad about all the wasted food and stuff as well. It was, I don't know, yeah. Various bits and bobs. But yeah, so, uh, yeah, I got some Amazon vouchers and spent those on some books. So those books will be coming soon. Uh, including I got the Witcher book too, so I'll crack on with that. Uh, some new French books. Uh... Yeah, can't remember what else. Uh, graphic novel, I got the Snowpiercer Volume 3 Terminus, which is the last of the three. So that was good. And my mum sent me back home with loads of food as well. So I travelled back today on the 27th, and now I am here. I'm back at home, so I'm just just looking after this little one, aren't I, Biggie? Just looking after you. There is some live music at the Bellevue later, which is a pub I go to with Mamie quite often. She's still in France. So um, I don't have anyone to go to it with, but I'm tempted just to go along anyway and see if I know anyone, because the band that's playing, they play like 50s rock and roll, which is like, Biggie, which is, which is right up my street, you know? But uh, also I have some books to update you on. I believe these are all we have. Yes, so when I headed off, I was still reading Deep Thinking by Gary Kasparov. I've now finished it. A uh, full review will be coming soon. It's like a 3.5 out of 5. I was expecting it to be more about AI than it was. As it was, it was just almost entirely about chess, which is kind of fair enough, because he is like a known for being the world chess champion, you know? But um, I don't know, I was just hoping for more on the subject of AI, especially because it's like where artificial intelligence ends and human creativity begins. And actually, it was mostly like blow-by-blow -blow accounts of games of chess, really. But yeah, it was I. Um, so I finished that, and then I picked up The Outsider by Stephen King. This was sent to me by Charlie Heathcote. And basically, I have a tradition every time I head home, or I know I'm going to spend a lot of time travelling, I pick up like the longest unread book that I have, which in this case was this Stephen King one. So yeah, I'm slightly over halfway through now. I didn't actually get a huge amount of... Uh, didn't actually get a huge amount of reading done. I'm enjoying it, but... I feel like I know the solution to it. It's kind of one of those where if you've read Stephen King before, it's pretty obvious where he's going with it. Which basically follows an investigation into a guy who's accused of a crime. He's got eyewitnesses and his DNA and stuff is there. But he also has eyewitnesses and th fingerprints and DNA and stuff proving he was somewhere else at the same time. And um, so yeah, you kind of know where that's going if you've read King before. But it's alright. Holly Gibney's just shown up in it. Which actually, she's kind of annoying me, which is bad because I used to really like her as a character. I think she was probably her and, you know, Bill, what's his name? Bill Hodges from the Mr. Mercedes trilogy. They were the two kind of good characters there. But that wasn't a particularly good trilogy. I honestly actually think King needs to stop writing, uh, like, crime novels. Because it doesn't really suit his style, I don't think. But, but hey-ho. And then I read a couple of bedtime books as well. So I finished reading A Room of One's Own by Virginia Woolf. I gave this a 4 out of 5. I think a lot of our arguments don't hold water as much. Like the central premise of this is uh, a woman must have money in a room of her own if she is to write. And I, I can see that in like 1910. Nowadays I think a woman must have a laptop and an internet connection to write. I mean I was thinking like, like J.K. Rowling when she wrote Harry Potter. She had no money. She didn't have like a room of her own. She was living in a council house with her kids and stuff. Um, but also she's talking about how women are like underserved in say poetry and I'm like if I think of modern poetry I think of Kate Tempest so it's like I don't know a lot and like even a lot of the poetry that I've been sent and enjoyed like Bethany Rivers that was a really good one uh, I can't remember what her book was called um, Anne Walsh Donnelly as well I read some of her poetry recently so I don't know it's just like maybe plays to be fair I can't think of that many female playwrights but I don't know that many male playwrights like contemporary ones, like David Hare, basically. So, um, yeah, I think I think her arguments were better for at the time than they are now, but I also think it's an important thing to read. And actually, I think that possibly the reason why things have changed is because of this. I mean, I was also thinking, like, the most highest-earning novelist, that was E.L. James for quite a while. I don't know if it still is. Uh, and she's a she, you know. So, 
Yeah, I don't know. I think it's a little less um, of a thing, I guess. But I don't want to come across as being like sexist or anything or misogynist because that's, you know, I, I'm sure there's still a lot of stigma in, you know, publishing as well in particular is like often like elderly white men who are calling the shots and stuff. But I do think things have got noticeably better since she wrote this. Um, but yeah, it was interesting. And then I read Trois Nouvelles by Edgar Allan Poe. So this is, contains La Chute de la Mazanusha, Le Chat Noir, and La Barique d'Amontillado, which is uh, the fall of the House of Usher, the Black Cat, and the Cask of Amontillado. It's bilingual, so it's got the English on one side and the French on the other. It took me a little while to read it, but actually it's interesting because I found Poe easier to read in French than in English, just because the English is so archaic and it's a modern translation, you know? Uh, and this was given to me by my other half as well, so it was kind of... Yeah, it meant a lot to be reading it. So now for my bedtime books, I'm reading a book called Saboteur. I can't remember who wrote it, but it's about the youngest member of the SOE, which is the Special Operations Executive, who were like, uh, basically working undercover in occupied France, coordinating the resistance and whatnot. So it's like the biography of this young member of it. Which is interesting so far, I'm only like 25 pages in. And then I've got Le Marchand de Venice, which is the Merchant of Venice. Hey Biggie! In French by William Shakespeare and I've never read the English version so I'm going to be reading them side by side but at the moment I'm currently reading the introduction which is uh, written just entirely in French and obviously I have no frame of reference to translate it so although I did get bits like they were saying it's a story of love and friendship and all this stuff um, but also like in general I find it hard to follow in introductions to stuff especially when you haven't read them before you know so that's where we're at don't know what I'm going to do this evening, just going to crack on with being productive, watching a bit of YouTube, maybe go to that, that gig, we'll see. But uh, I will update you. I'm watching The Snowman based on the Joe Nesbo novel, but with French dubbed audio. I haven't been paying much attention. My mum recommended it, and honestly, I haven't really thought that much of it. But I'm near the end now. In fact, there's six minutes left, so that's good. Okay. Hey, Biggie. Now we're watching A Walk Among the Tombstones in English, because it's not available in French audio. So, update for you guys. I'm still reading The Outsider. I'm on about page 340 now, so only about 100 pages left to go. Uh, my mental health hasn't been that good recently, to be honest, but hey-ho. I went out last night and did have a few beers. It's probably because I've been drinking too much because of Christmas and stuff. But the band was quite good, uh, and then, yeah, I came home, slept for a bit. Now I'm just being productive. Biggie, you've still got this clump in your fur. What are we going to do about this clump? It's because it's right behind his tail where he can't reach. Um, so yeah, it's now currently Saturday. I've got a new hoover being delivered in a minute that my mum's bought for me, and some new bedding and stuff, so that's very much appreciated of her. Biggie's purring at me. And I think that's all I've got to update you on, really. I've got some books to haul as well, so I'm going to go and film that, because I spent one of my Christmas Amazon vouchers. Cat. Cat, why are you eating the bin? Why are you eating the bin? There's no need to eat the bin. Well, you, you're licking it now. You are a strange creature. All right, it is Sunday. My hair's long again. I need to get my hair cut again. How is this even possible? Um, I've been productive. Uh, yes, my new Hoover came and my new bedding yesterday, so I managed to Hoover my house. God, I'm not doing, I'm not holding the camera very well today. I've not been awake for long, so that's also not helping. Uh, I've cracked on with a bit of work. I've been watching QI. Um, Noemi's travelling back from France today, so that's very cool. Uh, I do have some more little tiny bits left to do in the house, but not too much. Um, actually, let's have a little look. 
I need to go and find some nails from somewhere. Oh yeah, mainly I need to clean my porch. Um, because, <laughs> yeah, because as I've been going, I've like, you know, sorted out some stuff. And it, so now my porch has got like loads of recycling to go out and loads of um, uh, just general rubbish to go out. So I'm still reading The Outsider by Stephen King. I am now on a page 416 of about 470. So I'm hoping to finish that today. And then I guess I'm going to pick up something else. I might start um, I might start The Lies of Locke Lamora. Or I'm not sure. We'll see. Hello. God, my hair looks terrible. I definitely need to get it cut. Um, how are you guys? It is currently... Kind of too hot now. I was going to go outside for a walk thinking, oh, it's fine. It won't be that cold. It's definitely very cold and dark out there, so I didn't stick to it. Um, well, also, I wanted to listen to my music while practicing my French on my French app. And basically, it'll only let me do one or the other, so it kept pausing my music, which was kind of annoying. In terms of my reading, I've finished reading uh, the Stephen King one, uh, The Outsider, so I gave it a 3.5 out of 5. And I'm currently reading Andrei Sapkowski, Sword of Destiny, so this is Witcher book number 2. And um, yeah, I'm enjoying it so far, kind of enjoying it more than the first one, but I think it was because it took me a while to get used to Sapkowski's writing style. And now I would say I'm a fan, so I do hope to you know keep on reading through those. Uh, other than that, I've got some more stuff to pop on eBay. I did some work yesterday. I got to see my other half very... Oh, I pinged. Hey, cat. I got to see my other half um, very briefly yesterday. So we watched Team America, which was good because she hadn't seen that. And um, she's into South Park, so it was kind of... You know, she appreciated the humour. Biggie, stop meowing. I'm not going to let you out. It's too cold. Uh, I made some spaghetti bolognese earlier and some breakfast bread. In fact, I might go and chow down on some of that breakfast bread in a minute. But other than that, I think that's all I've got. So I'm going to love you and leave you for what I guess has been a pretty short weekly reading vlog. So as always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.